Hi folks, welcome back to my Frequently Asked Questions video series number three, Late Night Edition. So let's get started. What would you have done different when building the dome? Well, probably the biggest change I would have made was the shed area. It was by far the most expensive part of the dome to build and also the most complicated. Uh, trying to get a square building to match up with a curved structure was quite challenging. Instead, I may have done either a larger dome or one that had a secondary dome attached into it. So definitely the shed was probably, uh, I wouldn't say it was a mistake, but definitely would have reconsidered doing that. Question number two. When you started the aquaponics system, how did you cycle it? Well, some people might get grossed out by this, but I basically peed directly into the sump tank a couple of times. Um, I didn't have any fish initially to start up the system, so that was a good source of ammonia. Uh, some people will usually tell you that you should bottle your pee first, but I didn't really care about that, so I just peed directly into the system. And it seemed to work out just fine. Um, about a month or so later, I did uh, finally get my fish and kept the system running that way. Question number three, can you do a video tour of the entire greenhouse and setup? I haven't done one yet, mainly because I'm not done with the greenhouse yet. I still have several grow beds that I need to finish up and was sort of waiting to do a full-blown full video that way. Also in April, we'll be doing an open house to the general public so everybody can see it. So I've been scrambling to get the rest of the beds finished up. Uh, so you're welcome to come in and please look at the links in the description below for information about the tour. Question number four. I saw you were burning 12 pounds of pellets per hour. Isn't that costing a fortune to heat the greenhouse? Well, I can burn 12 pounds per hour in my rocket mass heater, but I don't burn it all day long. Usually I'll put one 40 pound bag in and let it burn for a few hours at night and that's enough to uh, heat the greenhouse and keep the system running fine for the next day. When it gets really cold out, I have burned two to four bags. Um, usually it's four bags when I'm here on the weekends and want to work out here and try to warm up the greenhouse a little bit more. So it's really for myself that I burn more fuel. I'm currently purchasing pellets at $4.18 a bag from Home Cheapo and they seem to be working out fine. And I'm on target to spend about $800 this year to heat the building. Now if you compare that against fuel oil, uh, which we mostly burn here in New England, some people usually burn natural gas if they're connected out into the city, but if you're in a rural area, it's usually diesel or uh, propane. Fuel oil can usually cost anywhere from $3.50 to $4 a gallon. Now if I had an equivalent oil burner using diesel fuel or fuel oil here, it would normally burn about one gallon per hour. So if you calculate out what I'm spending per hour in pellets, it comes to be about $1.25 per hour versus burning $3.50 to $4 per hour in fuel. So it is substantially cheaper to heat with pellets. Question number five, what is the liner that you're using? I am using EDPM pond liner. It is very durable but also extremely heavy to install. Some people do frown upon using that, but EDPM has been FDA approved for potable water use, but it is not used for getting organic certification. So you just sort of have to decide if you want to use EDPM or pick something else. I did check over the MSDS sheets for EDPM and it does not show any toxicity with it except for if you're burning it of course and then it emits all kinds of nasty things. An alternate option would be to use Duraskrim. Um, you can usually get certified organic using that material um, but again I didn't really care about that for my setup so the EDPM was fine. Um, it is much lighter to um, handle, it's much thinner and it's readily available at many places. Uh, for example you can get it at the aquaponics source and they sell it in all different types of sizes, so it's uh, fairly easy to get that way. And I'll leave a link to uh, them also in the description field. Jumping back to EDPM for a second, I do have some that has been installed for several years now in my smaller greenhouse, and I'm using crushed granite 
for a media and it's extremely sharp and it has not punctured the lining so I give it two thumbs up for that. So that's about it for the five questions. I'd like to thank you for watching once again and we'll see you soon.